What is up guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome back to another episode of JTAG Tutorial. So in this tutorial what we're going to be looking at is how to mod a game without a dedicated RTE tool. So if there's a game that you've got that you really want to mod but there's just no mod tools out for it unfortunately for whatever reason, maybe the modding community is just not interested in the game, maybe it's not a well known game, you know most of the games that the modding community seems to be interested in is just COD and perhaps Halo occasionally and maybe CSGO. Other than that, a lot, there's a, not a hell of a lot out there for some reason, but um, yeah, if you don't have a um, dedicated mod tool for the game that you want to mod, maybe this video can help you out. Now the way we're going to do this is it's very similar to the program Cheat Engine. If you've ever used Cheat Engine on a computer game, maybe it's just a Flash game or a proper PC game, if you're familiar with the program Cheat Engine for the PC, this is very similar. Um, if you're not, don't worry, I'll walk you through this step by step. Um, so first of all, what you're going to need to do is make sure you have XBDM, XRPC and JRPC installed on your system. Now, these modding programs, usually these these kind of ones that are for development, they're normally just using XBDM, but you know they, there are some that use RPC and JRPC or XRPC. RPC and XRPC are the same thing, so if you have XRPC, you don't need RPC on at the same time, they're pretty much the same thing. Okay, so what you want to do now is get the plugins installed. So in order to do that, you need to copy these over to the console. So what you can do is put them on a USB stick. So just go ahead, drag and drop these. They'll be linked in the description. Drag and drop them into your USB stick. So you have them here. Plug the USB stick into the console and I'll show you guys what to do from there. Okay, so what you want to go ahead and do is plug in your USB stick and then press X, go to USB, and just basically copy and paste these into the root of your hard drive or some storage device that you have hooked up to the console. Uh, go ahead and press Y, press A to copy, press X, head to the hard drive, press Y again, and press A to paste. And you just want to do that with every single plugin. I've already done it, so um, I've got all three of them on my hard drive. Once you've done that, you then want to go ahead and run Dash Launch. Um, again, episode 3 of JTAG Tutorials shows you how to install Dash Launch. Uh, so open up Dash Launch, head into Plugins. Make sure you set XBDM as Plugin 1. Plugin 2 is going to be um, RPC or XRPC, whichever one you have. Okay, and sc scroll down, find RPC, press X, select that one. Plugin 3 is going to be JRPC. And we're going to scroll down again, select JRPC, so we have them all added in this order. Now what we do is we press right bumper and we press X to save settings to HDD. If you haven't selected a device to save the files to, then you press A first of all to select the drive. Then you press X to save the settings to that drive. So that's it, we now have the plugins all installed and we should be able to connect up on Xbox 360 Neighbourhood. And that's it. So once you've added those plugins, you need to reboot the console and you should be able to connect on Xbox 360 Neighborhood. Now, the reason I'm rushing through this really quickly is I've already covered this stuff in other videos. So check episode 17 on how to install Neighborhood. And I think episode 22 or 23, I'll link it in the description, shows you how to um, connect RTE tools by using RPC and JRPC. Okay, so now that you have that set up, the next thing we're going to do is we need to find a game. Now, the game I've chosen is just a random game. I chose Sonic the Hedgehog, the 2006 version. I don't know if there are any mod tools for it. Probably not. It's just a random game I picked out. Um, I was trying to find a game that doesn't have static offset, so I'll, I'll go over that in the end. But as you can see here, I've got the game paused. I played it for a little bit, God help me, and I, g I gained 1,013 rings. So... Rings is basically the currency in this game, so you buy stuff in shops with the rings. So let's say we want to modify that to 99999 or something really high values and we can't because there's no mod tool out for this game. Maybe there is a mod tool out for this game, I didn't bother checking, there may be loads of mod tools out for this game, I don't know. But um, I just picked this game out at random, let's just pretend there's no mod tools for it and we want to modify our rings. So how are we going to do that? So first of all, you want to open up XCE Tools. This is a program we're going to use. There's other programs you can use instead of this tool, but this is uh, quite a useful tool. And it's probably one of the most similar ones to Cheat Engine as well, for people who are familiar with Cheat Engine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to switch the range from C to 
uh, 0, 0, 0, whatever, uh, change the E to a D. This means it's not going to do the full memory, it's just going to do from C to D. Um, it's not going to take as long to dump, but it's still going to take quite a while. What it has to do is dump the Xbox memory, and then it searches through the Xbox memory to find the addresses or offsets uh, where the value is 1013, which is what we have in here, 1013. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, I'm going to type in 1013, because that's our value in the game that we currently have, and then I'm going to click init or initialize. And another thing you need to do is check what it's set to. So I've got mine set to four bytes because the game is, that is a, you know, it's a proper number. It's not got a decimal point. If it had a decimal point, if it was something like, um, I don't know, 2.5, if you're looking for like a value like 2.5 or 342.50, then it would be a float. You need to know the difference between these data types. So a float is essentially, you know, a number that has a decimal point in it, so something point something. Whereas if you do four bytes, that's usually an, an integer, which is, you know, just a normal number like 1, 2, 140, 250, etc. So ours is a uh, 1013, so we select four bytes, four bytes, um, and we click initialize. Now what this is going to do is it's going to start dumping the memory. Now this is going to take a while, you just have to wait, you've got to be patient. Um, you've got to make sure, of course, that neighborhood is um, connected in order for this to connect to the console and start dumping the memory. And as you can see, it started, we're at 7%. So I'll just pause and I'll come back once it's finished, but it, uh, it's going to take a little while here. Another thing I should mention here is when you have the game paused, it tends to dump faster than when you're you're running it normally. Another thing you can do is freeze the memory completely, although I personally don't do that myself normally because it can cause the console to crash sometimes in certain cases. And when you freeze the memory to do the dump and then unfreeze it once the dump's finished, that can sometimes cause a console crash or, or the game to crash. So in which case I tend to just pause the game instead. Another thing you need to note down is you don't want to change the value while it's dumping. So our value is uh, still 1013, I don't want that value to uh, change at all, I don't want to be playing the game as I'm dumping um, the memory, because we want the value to stay the same while we're dumping it to get an accurate result. So we're almost done here, this is actually only taking about 2 or 3 minutes, because I'm paused. I, I did do this when I was unpaused uh, earlier, and surprisingly it took a lot longer. So, Okay, so it's 100% done. So now what we do, we type in the value that we have in the game, 1013, and we click exact. And that's going to search through the memory for all those values that are 1013. And as you can see, it's found a lot of them. So we've reached about, how many have we got? 231 values. So now what we have to do, I'll full screen this. So now what we have to do, guys, is we have to change the value in order to search to see what values have changed when we change the value in the game. So I'm going to go around this game, forgive me here, and I'm going to try and change the value. I need to head to one of the shops in this game, wherever that is. Can I go any faster than this? It's supposed to be Sonic. Right, so I'm going to go up to this guy, and I'm going to buy this, and that's going to take my money down to 513. So now I have 513, the value's changed, so I'll pause it here, and we'll go back on XCE Tools. So we'll minimize this, we'll go back to XCE Tools. And now what we're going to do is we're going to search for the new value, which is 513. So we're going to type in 513, and it's going to compare all the values to see which ones change to 513. So we click Exact. And it's going to search through the memory, so what, what values have gone from 1013 to 513. And there's only three, which is great. It means we've only found three results. Now, if you're doing a, a low number, like between two or three, say we were doing the lives, I've got five lives. Say I was searching for five, it would probably find thousands of results for five. And then I did a search, then I died, and it went down to four lives, and then I searched for four we'd probably still find a bunch, loads of value, lots of values. So what you would do is you would just keep doing it, keep go down to three lives and then try, or go from 
three lives to one life and then do it and see and eventually you'll keep filtering it down and down and down until you only get a few addresses only a few offsets um, for them for the game which means it has to be one of these three so let's go ahead and try the first one now this is where our next program comes in we could do it with an XCE tools I think but um, personally I prefer using peak poker for this so you can copy the value or offset here and then we're going to open up the program peak poker now peak poker requires you to connect to your IP address of your console which you can of course find in Xbox 360 neighborhood so you can find your IP address for uh, your console if you open up your neighborhood and just right click on the default console and go to properties it's going to tell you the IP address right there so you just type that into peak poker click connect and it should connect as long as you have the correct plugins installed as I showed earlier on and then you're going to click peak and poke and this is going to let you actually view the Xbox's memory so we paste in our offset that we found in XCE tools and then we click peak and that's going to have a look inside the memory at that location to see what we have and we can see we've got 0201 so that's in hex so if you open up a calculator and you say okay what's 0201 in hex obviously you have to put this in uh, programmer mode view programmer and you type in 201 well what do you know it's 513 so that's exactly our value there so this could well be it so let's try I'm going to press A to continue in the game and there's a short there's about a two second delay because of the capture card um, but it would change instantly normally so let's change this value higher we could do 9 or even go up to F remember this is hexadecimal so it goes up um, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then A B C D E F um, so we go up to F let's poke that's going to poke the memory to the value that we changed and as you can see on screen it has changed to 3841 so we have successfully um, basically modded this game without a dedicated RTE tool so can we go any higher let's uh, let's just do F F F F poke and BAM <laughs> look at that uh, can we go any higher than that let's try 01 here it's four bytes so it's all of this is the value here so um, let's do because these yeah anyway it's four bytes so one two three four because we searched for a four byte in here and that's what we have so that's why there's one two three four so we change any one of these four values it's going to affect the number up here and so let's go up to number three book oh. Try to get 99999. Eventually there'll be a limit. This counter will only go up so far. So let's go up to 505. That'll probably do it. Yep, there we go. Maxed it out. 9999999. So that is it, guys. That is how you modify a game without a dedicated RTE tool. Pretty cool thing. And this is what people do to make RTE tools. This is how they find stuff in games. Obviously, there's other methods you can use IDA. Uh, disassembler to open the the .xex files for the for the games and find stuff in there as well. But a lot a lot of people also find stuff this method by using memory dumps and searching through different uh, offsets and stuff, different addresses. So now, whenever you want to modify the game again, just take a note of this offset, create a text file, put the offset in there, and just say Sonic. I would say Sonic uh, Rings offset, and then I'd put this in here. So I'll just do that right now. I'll just create a little notepad document. I'll say Sonic Rings uh, Offset equals 0x. And then the offset, you put the 0x. That's just how it is when you're making an RTE tool. You would put the 0x in front of it. Peat Poker does it for you, which is why you don't enter 0x when you type this in. But yeah. That's basically it. Now there are there are a few things I should uh, mention. One is a lot of offsets for games are uh, dynamic, which means they'll change when the games reset or when you dashboard and go back onto the game or the console resets. The uh, the actual offset will change. Now I don't think the offset changes in this game. I think it's static, but I haven't really checked. I haven't restarted the console and checked this value to the one I found earlier. 
Um, so I'm not sure, but it, it looks to be static. It may be dynamic. Now, if it's dynamic, then it means you have to search for it every single time you start up the game, which isn't very good. But there's a lot of games out there that use static uh, offsets for most of the stuff in their games. And if you if they're using static offsets, then once you've found the offset, that's it. You can just save it. And now whenever I want to mod this game again, all I need to do is open up Peep Poker. I won't have to search in XCE tools anymore. I just open up Peep Poker, click Peek and Poke, paste in my offset that I saved, and then edit the value, and it will edit it on screen. So the whole point of this video, other than to show you guys how to mod a game without a dedicated RTE tool, is to kind of build up uh, the kind of starting basis of coding tutorials, which is a new series that I'm going to be starting on my channel. And basically coding tutorials, we're going to be taking these addresses in memory, these offsets that we found um, in the game, and we're going to be actually making a proper dedicated RTE tool out of that offset. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that, how to make an XRPC tool out of what we found here. That's going to be the first episode, first proper episode of coding tutorials. I am going to do a, an episode before that, which is just going to show you how to get everything set up. Um, but the proper first episode is going to be taking this op this offset that we found for this Sonic game and actually making a proper XRPC tool out of that. So we can just type in uh, whatever we want, say 50,000 50, rings, and we type that in and we click a button and it sends it to the console straight away. And you don't have to muck around with peak poker and pasting offsets in peak poker. So yeah looking forward to doing that so anyway guys if you enjoyed the video go ahead and leave it a like subscribe if you haven't subscribed already comment if you have any questions and i'll see you guys in the next video Shuffling